Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. It's time to update our CPU picks and normally we use our top five best format for this content, but with competition at an all-time high, for the most part, there are no clear winners and the right choice does heavily depend on your use case. Therefore, we're gonna work through the cons and pros of each option so you'll know exactly what will work best for you. But before we do, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by SpaceX and their Starlink service, a service that I pay for and have been using daily for over a year now. And you can order yours for high speed, low latency internet anywhere in Australia at Starlink.com. It has been a real game changer for me, so I'm very excited to be promoting the service and I'd like to tell you a personal story. Last winter, during a series of horrible storms, we lost power for a week. And although I have a generator to power my home and office, we do lose fixed internet, landline and cellular services as the local exchange only has backup power for five hours. After that, it is impossible to communicate with the outside world unless you have a service like Starlink or are willing to drive at least 30 minutes in a direction that hopefully still has power. Anyway, word got out that thanks to Starlink, I was still up and running. So we had locals turning up, asking if they could access our internet to get messages out. And of course, I was happy to help. And in the end, my office became a bit of a communications hub for locals, allowing them to connect with family and friends. So not only has Starlink drastically improved my download and upload speeds, making it easier to upload YouTube videos for you guys to watch and update my massive library of games for benchmarking, but it's also the only means of communications we have during a disaster period. I really can't recommend the service enough and I'm so grateful it exists. So head over to starlink.com to get a special offer for 50% off the hardware until New Year's Eve. It's available countrywide, so order yours now and I can tell you from personal experience, you won't regret it. Links in the video description. All right, so as always, we'll start with the most affordable CPU options, and the focus here is on gaming performance. So the only real contenders include the Ryzen 5 4500, the Core i3 10100F or 10105F, all of which can be had for about $80 US right now, and then there's the Ryzen 5 5500 and Core i3 12100F at $100. Then I guess the next step that would take you up to around $120 US for the Core i5 10400F, and Ryzen 5 3600, while the Ryzen 5 5600, that can be had for $130 US. For those of you building a brand new PC from the ground up, I strongly recommend avoiding the Ryzen 5 4500 and Core i3-10100F slash 10105F, as they're now only $20 less than the Core i3-12100F. And the newer 12th gen model offers substantially better performance and can be upgraded to a 13th gen Raptor Lake part down the track. There are a few examples where the 10th gen Core i3s make sense these days, and really the same is true of the Ryzen 5 4500, as there are almost no AM4 CPUs that you could own where the 4500 would present itself as a viable upgrade. So unless you're trying to build the cheapest PC possible by saving every last dollar, I think those older CPUs really, yeah, as I said, don't make much sense, even at the current $80 US asking price. So for those of you on a tight budget looking to build a new PC or even just update a platform, the Core i3-12100F is where I'd start. At $100, it does offer solid value. Even when paired with affordable DDR4 3600 cell 16 memory, the 12100 is generally a good bit faster than even the Ryzen 5 5500 for gaming, delivering on average 15% more performance in our tests. There are also a number of well-priced B660 motherboards that can support up to Core i9 processors without any throttling issues such as the $130 US MSI Pro B660M-A, but if you never want to upgrade beyond, say, a Core i5, the ASRock B660M Pro RS works well for $90, but the extra $40 for the MSI model does buy you a much more capable product in terms of power delivery. So $100 for the 12100F, $140 for a good B660 motherboard, and $60 for a decent 16 gigabyte DDR4 3600 16 memory kit, and you've got a great platform upgrade for just $300 US, or $350 US if you opt for a 32 gigabyte kit. Alternatively, if you wish to invest in DDR5, I'd recommend skipping the B660 boards altogether and instead opt for the Z690M PG Riptide. It looks to be a great value board at $160 US. Then for memory, the crucial 8GB modules work well enough, and at $85 for a 16GB kit, it is very cheap for DDR5 memory. Though if you are a bit more serious, G-Skills Ripjaws S5 DDR5 5200 32GB kit can be had for $145. Taking the DDR5 combo with the 32GB kit of memory to $405 US, and you'd really only go that way if you planned on upgrading to something like the Core i5 3600K down the track. 
As for the more expensive CPU options, such as the Core i5-10400F and Ryzen 5 3600, again, investing in Intel's dead LJ1200 platform doesn't make sense now, and you really only consider the Ryzen 5 3600 if you're already on AM4, but even then you'd obviously just skip it given that the Ryzen 5 5600 is currently just $10 more. Really, the choice here is either the Core i3-12100F for just $100, or the Ryzen 5 5600 for $130 and both are valid options. The Ryzen 5 5600 can be thrown on a quality B550 board for as little as $90, such as the MSI Pro B550M VDH Wi-Fi, while the ASRock B550 Pro 4 for $100 is another nice option. Again, $60 will get you a decent 16 gb DDR4 3600CL16 memory kit, or $110 for a 32 gb version, meaning you can piece the AM4 combo together for as little as $280, so $20 less than that of the 12100F, and you have the luxury of being able to upgrade to the 5800X 3D down the track, or for extra productivity performance, the 5900X or 5950X. So for basically the same price when factoring in platform costs, you can go with either the Core i3-12100F or Ryzen 5 5600. Both are excellent options with solid upgrade paths, and personally, I would struggle to pick between them as the performance they offer now is great, and the upgrade option to either the 13600K or 5800X 3D is also great, though AMD's 3D vCache chip currently costs $100 US more as all the $330 listings are now sold out. You can really make valid and strong arguments for going either way, so do make sure you price up both of these options in your region as that could be the deciding factor. Now, increasing the CPU budget, that opens up a number of AM4, AM5, LJ1200, and LJ1700 options. There are over a dozen processors to pick from here, but we can quite quickly narrow down the selection to just three. Basically, you can ignore Intel's 10th and 11th gen processors. When priced above $150 US, they just aren't competitive here. Most of the AM4 parts also don't make sense, such as the 5600X. You might as well just get the 5600. The Ryzen 7 5700X looks reasonable at $240, but really you'd only consider it if you were already on the AM4 platform with a much older and lower end Ryzen 5 processor, or perhaps something slower, or if you were interested in productivity performance. Even Intel's 12th gen parts can be a bit of a tough sell in the current market, but the 12400F at $180 isn't a bad way to get your foot in the door, and on something like the ASRock Z690M PG Riptide, that option can make sense. Paired with G-Skills Ripjaws S5 DDR5 5200 32GB kit, that combo would cost you $485, so almost 40% more than the 12100F build for 50% more cores, and in demanding games like Cyberpunk 2077, we did see a 32% performance boost for the 12400 over the 12100. Now, it is true that the Ryzen 7 5700X can offer comparable gaming performance, and even at $240 US, you can create a 32GB DDR4 build on an entry-level B550 board for about $40 less. But in games that are bandwidth hungry, the Intel combo will fare better. That said, if core-heavy productivity is on the menu, then the 5700X is the better option, given that it will deliver around 30% stronger performance. So the Core i5-12400F enjoys a better upgrade path and the ability to support DDR5 memory, while the 5700X combo is cheaper overall, will typically deliver a similar gaming experience, and it's much more powerful for productivity. Now, moving past those options, we land on the Core i5 12600K, 13600K, 12700K, 11900KF, and Ryzen 5 7600X. The 11900KF at $355 makes no sense. Not that the 11th gen Core i9 ever made any sense. And the 12700K is now pointless as it costs more than the 3600K and is slower for everything. The 12600K at $280, that seems like a reasonable deal. But as we found in a recent value analysis, it is worse value than the 13600K for gaming, and much worse when it comes to productivity, so the 12th gen Core i5 is also a write-off. This then leaves the Core i5 13600K at $320, and the Ryzen 5 7600X at $300, and we've already made numerous detailed comparisons looking at just these two CPUs. The advantage of the Core i5 13600K is its superior productivity performance as it can often put those e-cores to good use, offering substantial gains over the 7600X. Also, for those of you who like to tinker with their hardware, so dabble in overclocking and memory tuning, the 3600K is a better choice, offering more headroom and a greater degree of memory tuning. 
There's also a wider range of sub $200 motherboards on offer, thanks to support for 600 series boards. And of course, backwards compatibility with DDR4 means you can carry over older memory or purchase from the vast pool of already available DDR4. That said, when CPU bound, DDR4 performance will generally be slower than that of DDR5. So if you're building an entirely new PC or executing an entire platform upgrade, I recommend jumping to DDR5 now. The advantage of the Ryzen 5 7600X is that it's more efficient, consuming less power, which in theory should make it easier to cool. Though I don't believe cooling to be a major consideration here. The real advantage of the Ryzen 5 part is the superior AM5 platform, which will support at least two more generations of processors, offering a broad upgrade path for those investing now. There's really no right or wrong option here in my opinion. By default, they are both excellent products and ultimately, you will need to toss up between stronger productivity performance and platform longevity. Now, as we get up to the $400 price point, there's really no reason to consider any of the older previous generation CPUs. Even the 5800X 3D, it's a bit of a tough sell here, unless of course you've already invested in the AM4 platform. The 3D Vcache Zen 3 processor was really only worthwhile for new system builders at the discounted $330 price, which right now isn't a thing. So that leaves the Ryzen 7 7700X at $400 or the Intel Core i7-13700KF at $420 with the iGPU KSKU at $440. And for a mere 5% premium, I feel like you might as well just get the 13700K for stuff like quick sync support. Now the 7700X and 13700K battle is very similar to the 7600X and 13600K. Basically, we're looking at the same list of cons and pros. And in my opinion, DDR4 support for the Raptor Lake CPU is no longer beneficial. For these higher end parts, you'd always opt for DDR5 when building a new system or executing an entire platform upgrade. So in terms of price, they are much the same. Board costs at this level are also pretty similar. You'd be looking at spending around $200 for something decent with a good feature set. And DDR5 memory is gonna be much the same. That being the case, the 13700K is the stronger productivity CPU, at least 10% faster for core heavy workloads, but can be as much as 45% faster. So typically the Core i7 will be much faster for productivity. Then when it comes to gaming, they're close enough to call a tie. The advantage of the 7700X is that it's the more efficient processor, consuming a lot less power, though power limiting the 13700K can help, but I suppose the same is also true of the 7700X, so bit of a moot point there. Again, the real advantage for the Ryzen 7 part is the superior AM5 platform, which will support at least two more generations of processors, as I just noted, offering a broad upgrade path for those of you investing now. Now, strictly for gaming, I would go with the 7700X, though, as I've noted, the 3700K is just as capable, but it's the efficiency and platform that wins me over to the Ryzen 7 here. But if productivity is also of concern, then I think the 13700K is the better option. It's certainly the better all-rounder from a performance standpoint. Then finally, we have the Ryzen 9 7900X, 7950X, and Core i9 13900K. When talking or just looking specifically at the AMD processors, we see that the 7950X does offer better value. It's only $44 per core, opposed to $46 per core for the 12 core 7900X. And then if you're talking about gaming performance, you'd really only buy, well, the 7900X over the 7700X if you were interested in productivity. For gaming, strictly, you'd probably go with the 7700X. And then if you're focusing on productivity, you sort of have to assume there that time is money, in which case you would just get the better value 7900X. So I don't really see too many scenarios where the Ryzen 9 7900X makes sense. You'd either opt for the 7700X or the 7950X. But again, if you're just gaming, the 7700X is a better choice than either the 7900X or 7950X as single CCD processors ensure lower latency between cores. Even today, the 3700X is still generally a better gaming CPU than the 3950X, especially in titles that have issues with dual CCD processors. So at least on the AM5 side of things, the 7900X and 7950X are first and foremost productivity CPUs that you'd only pick over the 7700X if you're focused on work or work and play. And if work is on the agenda, then the 7950X makes the most sense in my opinion. As for Intel, the Core i9-13900K is a beast. A literal beast when it comes to power usage, sucking down significantly more power than the 7950X for a similar level of performance. 
In my opinion, the 7950X is the better productivity CPU, especially for core heavier work, as it either matches or beats the 1300K, and again, it does so using significantly less power. For gaming though, the 1300K is the king. It's certainly not miles faster, just 3% on average according to our own testing, but there are examples where the Core i9 is around 20% faster, and that can be a big deal for competitive gamers. So if you're just gaming, the 1300K is the way I'd go, though it's not obvious to me that I'd purchase it over the cheaper Ryzen 7 7700X. Right now you can purchase a really nice quality AMD B650 motherboard for $200, and then G-Skills Trident Z DDR5 6000 CL3632 gigabyte memory, that can be had for $205, taking the entire combo to $805 US. Meanwhile, the 13900K costs $620, and you'll want to spend at least $200 on a Z690 motherboard to avoid VRM throttling, chuck in the same G-Skill DDR5 memory, and that combo comes to $1,005 US. So a rather large 25% price premium there for what amounts to very similar gaming performance. The Core i9 was just 2.5% faster on average at 1440p, with an RTX 4090 in our testing, and the margin was also the same at 1080p. So, unless you're after the absolute fastest gaming performance possible right now, there's little point in investing in the Core i9-13900K. For productivity, I'd go with the 7950X, and then for gaming, the 7700X and 3700K are better value options. So, those are my CPU recommendations right now. There are plenty of great options, and providing that you stick with the current gen stuff towards the higher end, you really can't go wrong. AMD and Intel are currently locked in a fierce battle, which is obviously great to see. Good news for you guys, especially if you're looking at building a new computer or upgrading. The only thing I'll say to conclude this video is if you can wait to make your CPU purchase, then I recommend you do at least until early next year. Normally we see some interesting announcements come out of CES and I'm expecting AMD will be looking to breathe some life in AM5 sales, which could mean 3D vCache models or more affordable non-X versions. I think we're probably gonna see those non-X versions a lot sooner than we would have otherwise. And then of course I do expect AM5 motherboard prices to drop a little bit more by then and likely DDR5 pricing will improve as well. It's also possible pricing on Intel's side will become uh, even more competitive. Having said all of that though, we do have Black Friday coming up uh, and if you do see a really good sale, I'm not telling you to pass on that, but be aware that yeah, pricing will likely improve a bit by January, February next year and we will almost certainly have some new CPUs. So keep all of that in mind when making your purchases. Finally, please don't forget to check out the Starlink offer via the link in the video description or via the pinned comment. It is genuinely an amazing service. So I am happy to be promoting it. Uh, for those of you like me in a rural location or for those of you like to roam around, it's just unbelievable. On that note, I do plan to check out their RV Starlink service soon. So that'll be really interesting. Anyway, it was great to advertise a service that I've already been using for quite a long time and had a great experience with. So again, thank you to SpaceX and Starlink for supporting our work. And that is where I'm going to end the video. If you did enjoy this one, give it a like. You can subscribe for more content. And we do have uh, what we have, Float Plane and Patreon. You can sign up to either of those and you get more hardware unbox goodness. So check that out if you're interested in stuff like Tim and myself getting together for live streams. We answer any questions, very, very transparent. We do all that live. Uh, Discord server where you can ping us and the rest of the awesome community. Behind the scenes content, q and a lot of cool stuff there. So if you're interested, check it out. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time. <laughs>